Hey, howdy folks, how's it going? Uh, you know what? <laughs> Anybody who's been out driving lately? Yeah, I think you understand the frustrations I'm feeling right now. Uh, the jams are back with a vengeance and uh, actually why? Uh, really, because for all intents and purposes, the, the festive season is over. Uh, Hari Raya is over. Yesterday was uh, Wesa day. Um, yeah, long weekend. Oh, maybe. Nah, couldn't be. Um, if there was a crawl to get back to KL after a long weekend, it would have been yesterday, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, one of the things I miss about the MCO is just driving anywhere at any time of the day and there was no jam at all. But yes, the jams are back with a vengeance. And uh, the good thing is, yes, as you can tell by the uh, brown seat covers and these crazy headrests, which look like it split your, your skull in three if you're hit from behind, is that I'm driving the Volvo. Yes, I'm driving the brick wagon uh, and then, <laughs> with a constant eye, one eye on the road and the other eye on the temperature gauge. But you know what? It's been stable. I mean, like really, really stable. No no problems at all. It's, uh, it's sorry, I'm overtaking a, a very slow truck. I don't know why it's going so slow. But yeah, the, the brick wagon's been performing really well. Sorry if there's a bit of ambient noise. That's not my fault. That's the engine. The engine of this car actually sounds like there's a tornado going on underneath and I think it's because of that huge big ass fan that I've got under the bonnet there to keep this 2.3 uh, four cylinder cool yeah <laughs> and uh, it's working well so you know what I'm gonna leave it I'll bear with this I'll bear with the sound this is what I mean about uh, cars that were not homologated for our country this car was because Volvo has been building and making cars in Malaysia since the 60s, they are one of the oldest car makers to make uh, to make cars in Malaysia, CKD, locally assembled cars. And uh, so they know about our climate and they know about uh, our heat and our humidity and, and stuff like that. And uh, that's why the, the Volvo performs really well given uh, whatever the, uh, whatever the uh, traffic condition or situation might be. Very, very good car. And uh, this is also what I mean about a properly sorted car. Once the car is properly sorted and preventive maintenance is adhered to, uh, the car will just keep serving you really well because it's all mechanical. It's all mechanical. It's not uh, nothing phenomenal or magical about it. It's uh, a whole bunch, like I said earlier, it's a whole bunch of parts and electronics all sewn together to make a something with four wheels, a steering wheel and an engine run. And uh, that's one. Of, ooh, I need to turn the recirculator on. Yeah, and that's another thing. There's a there's a, a, a roadblock here, and I there's been a lot of roadblocks lately, which uh, kind of disconcerting. Can you see? Uh, hi guys, how's it going? Hope you're okay. Anyway, yeah, uh, quite a number of roadblocks, and uh, well, you know what? I think that's a good thing yeah keep the cars that are on the road legal so yeah I'm just driving around I think I'm I just decided to go out for a drive I decided uh, now since I'm I'm nearby I thought I'd take the car to Ken zone and give it a once-over um, still long way to go before the the next service and uh, 370 I'm at 367 right now a uh, thousand uh, so, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I might do a checkup. I might do a full checkup. I pumped the tires myself just now. Yeah, try to do that at least once every two weeks. Yeah, I see a lot of cars out there with uh, deflated tires or tires that are low on psi, and um, so yeah, I try to do that at least uh, once every two weeks. Anyway, just uh, another another vlog or in-car mobile vlog of uh, trying to take care of uh, your car, uh, especially cars that have. Uh, uh, lapsed in terms of warranty you want to make sure that nothing breaks because that's when things get really really expensive yeah um, for this Volvo it's, it's so basic it's a very very basic engine the aircon is running really well uh, for our climate I think that's a must it's not a luxury anymore I come from a time when uh, there were actually cars being sold with uh, aircon as an option uh, yes a cost option tornado uh, cost option but now they are standard standard equipment on any car that's sold in Malaysia you cannot survive without an aircon you can still somewhat survive without power steering I think uh, 
uh, but I don't think you can survive without aircon because our heat and humidity is actually dangerous. Yeah, it's a health hazard. So that's one thing about Volvos, yeah? They make sure their aircons were really, really good. Uh, kind of like what uh, you would think about Proton aircons. Proton aircons being the best. Volvo made their aircons really, really good and they made the cabin very, very comfortable because they felt that a comfortable driver, a driver who is, <laughs> sorry, comfortable, and uh, at ease, stress-free, uh, is a better driver. And I have to agree because um, if you're uncomfortable in your car or if you feel like you just want the drive to be over because you just feel so horrible, that makes you an impatient driver. Uh, impatience, inconsideration and indecision, those are the three I's I talked about a long time ago. I don't know if you caught that or not. My handbrake needs WD-40. Um, I don't know if you caught that one or not, but those are the three I's that really make you a not so good driver and a hazard on the road. Uh, so be careful about that impatience, you know, trying to just so we weave here, weave there and just get to where you're going as fast as possible. Yeah, in consideration, making uh, stupid decisions like speeding up when someone's just trying to merge. And uh, that's what causes traffic jams actually. And in consideration, using your phone while driving and then, you know, at the traffic light, everybody's moved off, but you're still playing with your phone. And the next thing you know, by the time the car behind you gets to the light, after you've moved off, the light's changed red and he's got to wait. So these are small things that actually make you a very bad driver and make you the target of getting honked at. And what is it about honking that's become such a grave family ancestry insult? I mean, I honk just to let people know I'm there. But these days, people are honking and keeping their hand on their horn for like a minute. I mean, like really, really pissed off, cursing your ancestors back down seven generations. I don't know, why? And then, for on the reverse side, just, you know, my phone looking around. Yeah. <laughs> on the reverse side, just beeping somebody. Whoa. It's like you are declaring war. They slow down, they break check you. Why? If you didn't do something stupid in the first place, you would not have been honked. I mean, think of it that way. Before you blame somebody, think of what mitigated that horn that you just got. And normally, if I get honked, it's my fault. I've, I've noticed that like nine times out of ten, it's my fault definitely my fault so think of it that way yeah and please don't think of a honk as an act of war as an as a declaration of war that you know um, you want you 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 are now you are now required to exit your car and physically engage the person that honked you I mean it's ridiculous if you were to drive in in a country like India I've driven in India before drivers there drive with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand on the horn. I mean, I kid you not. If, if they didn't honk, uh, it is their fault if they get hit because they didn't tell people that they were there. <laughs> it's it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy, but uh, it's true. It's true. So don't don't think of a honk as a declaration of war. Yeah, it's just maybe somebody letting you know that you've reversed too close to the front, and they're letting you know that they are there. That could be it. It's not trying to get you to start a war with them or you know have a, a nice punch up before lunch come on it's, it's just a honk but uh, for those who are honking just like maybe just like like that like just just to tell them that you know you're there that's it don't like go and lean on your horn for a minute I mean that that is like just you know rude hello sorry any conversation can be interrupted with a good hello it's okay I'm here to where I'm going uh, there was no reason for this. I was just bored in the traffic jam just now. But now, you know, no more traffic jam already and I'm very near Kenzone. So, I shall sign off and uh, take care of you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for just being with me. Uh, quick update on all the weevils, yeah? Uh, the Alfetta is still at Alpha Tech. The 146 is running beautifully. Uh, I need a shakedown drive of that car. Uh, I'm gonna send it back to check the drive shaft. I, I hear some sounds coming from the left side of the, the drive shaft. The Pajero is going for an off-road trip uh, next month. So stay tuned for that. The Volvo is with me at the moment. The Charade is just one of those PPG cars that just, you know, put petrol and go and, and no problem. Uh, the Waja is running beautifully. Another one of my PPG cars. So I've got actually two spare cars, the, the Charade and the Waja. Um, the Fiat Punto is at Kenzone. 
Uh, that's it's pretty much its home right now, except once in a while when I go and swap cars and bring it out for a, for a drive, for a topless drive. But uh, it pretty much lives there. So go say hi when if you ever drop by. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all. Uh, what else? Did I miss any? Oh, the Accord. The Accord. Sadly, the uh, uh, road tax expired last month, so I haven't got that, that re renewed yet. It's parked safely under a porch. It's actually got the best parking of all my Weevils. So she uh, she's running well. Uh, from the last update, yeah, the road tax has already expired, but uh, running beautifully and uh, just one of those other cars that once sorted has proven to be amazing, really, really amazing. Very, very happy with that car. Uh, did I miss anything? I think that's it. So I'm here already and I shall uh, sign, sign off now. Okie dokie. Take care, y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.